Hey everybody, let's take a look at module number seven. Uh, this is this is a big turning point for us. Module seven is a big turning point. Module six, you turned in the first draft uh, of your of your major research paper. We've been working, you know, we worked five modules, ten weeks to get to that point. We hit number six. You did your first draft. Number seven then tries to pull all those pieces together and get you ready to turn in that final draft. So this is a big kind of moment for us. Six was really important in that you did turn in that draft and that was like the big thing we did, right? Like that's the biggest thing you've done. But this really sets us up for the end. Module number seven, it's the peer response and reflection. And I have to tell you, I love peer responses. Uh, and I know that they probably have gotten a bad name over the years um, because I think a lot of times people just don't know what to do with them, right? Like, here you go, read their paper, give them some feedback, right? You know, and, and what we want to do is we want to we want to structure this in a way that you know what to be looking for and then how to present that information. Now, this comes with some, you know, there's some things to think about when it comes to peer responses. Um, you know, first off, you know, I think that you probably take a lot of pride in your paper in the thing that you wrote. You probably really appreciate what you did. You like it. I know you might say like, oh, it's awful. But then when somebody else says something negative about it, you're like, oh, no, no, it's not that bad, right? Um, so I know that a lot of times we take pride in our work. And I am confident that all of you have done some good work. Now, your paper might need a little bit of finessing. Maybe there's a little something that you could do to kind of clean it up a little bit, make it better, right? But I think a lot of you have done some really good work. So we want to think about peer reviews in a way that really bring out that positive and then help you kind of like, hey, here's some things that you can do to make that better. So I think this is like super important, okay? And so here we have our course objectives, our module objectives, there you go. Uh, and then we get into this kind of overview, all right? And again, I like the overview because it's really kind of like a checklist of what, you know, what kinds of things you're gonna do and how you're gonna do them, right? So I think this does serve as a pretty valuable piece. The big goal for this uh, module is to be doing that peer response, that peer uh, feedback, right? Like, here's the thing I did. Somebody's going to look at it and then is going to offer you some feedback on it. Say, hey, here's what I see. Here's what I would suggest. And here's what I really like what you did, right? Um, so we have here, you know, purpose, audience, tone, and content. Uh, I really like that. I always talk about purpose audience approach, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, purpose, why am I doing this? What is my goal? What do I want to accomplish in my writing, my audience, who is the receiver of that message? And then approach. Now, approach is like tone and content and all the ways that we construct that message, right? So you think about like, you know, the little kid who's getting ready to stick their finger in the electric socket. What's the purpose? Well, you want to keep the kid safe. And the audience is a little kid, right? And so what do we know about little kids? They're impetuous and they don't know things and they're not familiar with, right? And there can be emotional and whatever. So then you think of tone, how do I address that audience to get that purpose across? Don't stick your finger in the socket or do I say, don't do that, right? Because again, I want a certain purpose to happen and how best do I deliver that? What is the best tone? What is the best voice to use, right? And how do I say it? What's that content? All these things go in to helping us create a message that is effective, that is purposeful, that gets, that gets the audience to a particular place and that we've already envisioned that and we know they can get there because we understand that audience, right? So I think that's super important. Um, we do have down here uh, a lot of information about peer editing, uh, peer review, and how we're going to do that and the format we're going to do that in. Um, the format that we're going to use is this uh, peer response letter, okay? And I do like this because I think, first off, this is something that you'll do in a lot of your other classes where you'll have to like formally propose something and it will often come in this form of like a memo or a letter. So we have like the template that you'll be using, you know, your name, the college, you know, the, which, which uh, campus you're the closest to. That's the one that's the uh, most important for you, right? Um, the date, 
okay, the date that, you know, that you did this, and then the person you're sending it to, okay, and again, their campus, um, you know, where, where are they at, you know, what, what is their home kind of location, and then we're going to break this up into three pieces. The first is this, I heard, and that is where I have read your paper, and I try to kind of summarize what you've said. Now, that is super important because if, you know, if I can't retell your paper, I didn't understand it very well. Now I got to understand why I didn't understand it. Was I not paying attention? Was I, you know, I wasn't in the right place to do this? Uh, You know, what was going on, right? Or did you express yourself well enough, right? And so when you get this memo back, you know, this idea of this I heard, this is a retelling of what I, the reader, think you, the writer, have said. Now, you think about that like, okay, was that really what I said? Did I intend to say that? What happened that might have changed that message, right? Uh, So we really want to be able to summarize the original paper. And then I noticed, okay, so now this is the things that really attracted your attention. A lot of times I talk about what was the most important piece of this paper and why. What was the piece that really motivated you or got you or made you aware of or made you understand this better, right? What really stuck out to you? Now, it could be because it's like a a, a great visual, right? Like something that I, I see it, I feel it, I can empathize with it, I get it, right? Maybe it's something that just made it real for me. Like I didn't think of it that way or now I know what it looks like, right? Uh, one of the examples I use a lot of times um, at one point, it was estimated that one in four Americans, one in every four Americans would be exposed to the AIDS virus at least once in their life. Well, we all instinctively know what 25% is, right? Like that that's a number that we comprehend. But what does that look like? And so you look around your classroom and if there's 20 people in there, right, that's five people. And you can go one, two, three, four, five. You five have been exposed, right? And, and so when maybe it's that you've done, you know, they, the writer did something that really helped you visualize it, see it, and understand it, right? Maybe it was an approach. Maybe it was the word, uh, word choice. Maybe it was the tone that you used. How, what really jumped out and helped me identify what, what stuck to me, right? And then this I wondered. Now, this is probably the part that most people assume uh, is peer editing, right? Like, here's a bunch of things I think you should do, right? So as you, the reader, have looking at their paper, their essay, think about, like, what are some things that maybe could be done better or differently, right? Think about the introduction, you know. Was there a really good hook? Did it really get my attention? Were you really clear on the thesis statement? Uh, Think about the organization. Like, was that the best point to lead with? Did you have a real logical flow of information to build up to a particular place? Were the examples really good and clear? Um, Word choice. Did it really sound like a college paper ready to be turned in? Grammar, spelling, um, you know, or um, um, just like construction, sentence construction, all these things, right? Now, I do want to warn you, I said grammar and spelling, um, and I think that's part of it, but we really want to focus on the message. So when I talk about editing, I talk about, you know, proofreading or revising, I talk about it in two steps, message, content, and then mechanics, global editing and the mechanical editing. Here's the message, and I want to make sure I have that message down right. What was said, how it was said, uh, the examples and the words and the structure, all those things, right? All the rhetoric that goes into it. Once I have that, then I can go to the mechanical, which is the spelling, the grammar, the commas, the things like that. So in other words, I know what I'm going to say. I just need to clean up the process, right? And and if you're trying to do both at the same time, you know, you're constantly going back and forth, back and forth. That's why I really talk about fixing the message before you fix the grammar. And that's what this wonder part really is. When I look at your message, what do I see? How did I receive it? How did I connect with it? How did it work for me? Okay. Uh, there is also on here a sample of what one of these could look like. Okay. 
Um, and here's, you know, it, it, I heard, I noticed, I wondered. Uh, I don't think you have to bold those three words, right? I don't think you have to bold those three words to make them stand out. I think it should be obvious, right? Um, and if you wanted to, you know, change up that wording a little bit, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Um, you know, it could be, I heard, uh, what I took away from your paper was, if I had to summarize your paper, this is what I believe you said, right? So, I mean, you don't have to use those exact words, but those are the three steps. And in that order that I should see, you summarize the work, you talk about what was really effective for you, what jumped out at you and why, and then here's some things I think you could do to really improve that paper, right? Um, now, during that process of peer editing, during that process of peer editing, uh, a couple of things that I, I really like to remind people of. Um, you know, first off, you know, it really helps both of us, right? Like the original writer gets fresh eyes on their paper. When that person wrote the paper, they know what they meant to say. They know what they wanted to say. They know how they were going to say it. And they're the experts, so they have all that information, right? And sometimes it's hard to divorce yourself from what I know versus what my audience knows, right? That can be difficult. And so what happens then is when some fresh eyeballs come over there, they can kind of help you see like, yes, you did or no, you didn't fully express your message, right? Like, so we can kind of see that a little bit better, right? So you get some fresh eyes. And again, you know, maybe what works for you might not work for somebody else, right? And your approach or organization or style. And so you can kind of take that into consideration. Do I need to change this for a wider audience, right? But I also think the reader gets a lot out of this because you look at this, and you're like, I didn't, I never thought of like using that as an introduction or that was a really interesting way to present this information or that was a, uh, you know, I really, you know, that was a really good, uh, you know, the way they, they related that topic to me, that was really good. Uh, and so you can start to look at those things that worked and say, why did those work? How can I incorporate that into my writing? Right. So I start to see some things that I can imitate. Now I think too, when you see things that don't work, you can kind of ask yourself, why do they not work? And, you know, are those things that I can avoid or get around, right? So it really is beneficial on a lot of different levels. I will warn you um, that one of the keys to this, two keys to this, really, uh, the first will be being very specific, right? When you talk about organization, when you talk about examples, when you talk about sources, when you talk about word choice, whatever it might be, be specific. In paragraph three, on page two, uh, the last sentence in this part, when you use this example, try to be as specific as possible because that helps the original writer know where you're talking about. If you say, I kind of got lost in the middle a little bit, where in the middle were you lost, right? Like what part? And, and that will help the original writer know what you're referring to. So please be as specific as possible. Uh, you don't have to use quotes necessarily, but you do need to be pointing out like, you know, passages, you know, where can I find this information? Where on the page? It could be, what was the point that we were talking about? Um, the other one to think about, and, and this is probably even bigger, is just understanding the tone. And I know I've made this comment on a few discussion posts before, um, but when you are, you are looking at someone else's paper and you're offering feedback, we do need to be very mindful about how that will be received. And I'm not saying that, oh, we have to be really nice to everybody. Um, I think that we can be critical, but we need to be critical in a way that helps that writer get better, right? So instead, this part wasn't very good, you know, then maybe think about how can we say that in a way that is the tone is a lot nicer or is a little more positive, right? Um, for instance, in on the on the third page, when you were talking about this point, it was hard for me to understand that. I believe it was hard to understand because, and you explained why you had some trouble understanding it. If I were you, I might, uh, one suggestion I might make to you would be to do something, right? So in other words, instead of like passing judgment on people, we want to be critical, but we want to be constructive at the same time. And that really is all about tone. We want to, and again, that helps when we say in this part, the specifics, right? But we want to offer those suggestions. Here's a thing that didn't work for me and why it didn't work for me. Okay. So we do want to definitely keep that in mind.
Uh, one of the other big pieces that we're going to be kind of focusing on, uh, along with the peer edit, will be a reflection on your writing. Okay, and again, like our like our posts that we've always done, you're going to put up an initial post by the first by the end of the first week, and then you will respond to at least two other people's by the end of the module. Okay, and we just want to reflect. We want to look back at where you are at like now we're up you know we're into module we've done you know six modules we're into seven we're almost to the end and it's kind of a look back like hey here's what we set out to do where am i at where do i feel uh i've done well where do i feel i still need to pick up what was surprising what was beneficial uh what has still got me scared um here are some questions that you might think about that you could use in your initial post okay um the idea is that we want to see that you have been reflecting and that you are taking a critical look at where you are at and where you think you need to go now when you respond to at least two other people's okay what we want you to do again being very specific right looking specifically at their writing okay in this i saw that you wrote blank right in this part where you were talking about right we want to be very specific we want to be able to point back okay we want to be able to point back but you're going to get address or include two or more of these pieces for your reply all right what areas of the course did you did your peers find most challenging how did that compare to you so when you sit there and you you read somebody and they say oh i really struggled with blank right hey i did too or, you know, and why, right? Like what made it difficult for you? Or maybe it's like, you know, I didn't struggle with that as much. I thought I would, but I didn't because, and you talk about that, right? Discuss how your peers' understanding of the course is similar or different to yours, right? Like, again, you know, that goes back to that I heard you say, right? Like I, I was thinking the same thing. I wasn't thinking the same thing. Why did I, you know, why did that maybe happen that way, okay? Um, what did your peers consider to be their greatest uh, successes and how does that compare to yours so we do want to you know we do want to think about how this is you know that this is a learning process but over the course of you know the eight modules that you got better that you did things that you didn't think you would be able to do or maybe you you thought you could do it but you did better right so what did what was successful to them and how does that compare to yours how is your writing revision process different from your peers? Again, you know, what was working for you? How did you get to that point in your process? And how uh, reading your peers' reflections caused you to reconsider what you learned in the course? I, again, this isn't a uh, he said, she said. This isn't a one-upping each other, right? Like you said this, but I did this, right? Like that's really not what we're trying to do. But what we're really wanting to look at here is, you know, I see what you said. And this is how I did or didn't have a similar experience, right? So that's really what we want to be thinking about when it comes to that. And then that brings us to the actual uh, um, uh, peer review and posting those responses to each other, right? So you'll be assigned uh, people to be uh, uh, reflecting on and reviewing, okay? And again, we'll be using that letter writing format that we've already looked at. OK, um, we have the instructions here. Uh, there are some uh, some specific things that we want to be thinking about. For instance, when we do this, we do want to uh, name, use a kind of a standard naming scheme so you know how to find the information so you can send it to the right person. Right. We don't want to send comments to the wrong people, whatever. OK, uh, and then we want to do them separately. Right. Like we want to separate, we want to post these separately. So they're not in like, you know, one post with two uh, letters. We want to do them individually. Right. Um, again, here we have like our formatting and our requirements. You have that letter template to follow. So you should be good to go. We want to be detailed. We want to be complete. We want to use our best writing, but we also want to be specific. We want to be critical, but we want to be constructive. So you're going to have at least three paragraphs. The I heard. That, that's that I heard, I noticed, and then I wondered, right? We want to be very uh, conscious of those. Like I said, you don't have to use that specific wording, but as long as you use something similar, 
uh, that applies to that. We want to do that paragraph point information and explanation, that pi structure. You're going to make a point, right? You're going to make a point. You're going to show what you mean, and then you're going to explain it, okay? Uh, so we do want to be uh, very kind of... Um, we want to make sure that it's easy to understand what our comments were coming from and what sparked those ideas. And then when we're responding each paragraph uh, by writing a complete academic theme, right? And again, these are, I, again, I don't want you to think that you have to use this exact terminology, all right? That, not this exact necessary terminology, but these ideas, right? Like this is what you're going to be saying, how you're going to approach each of those points. Um, you do have then an, a knowledge check at the end. It's a quick 10 question uh, uh, knowledge check that should, uh, you know, kind of test where you're at, uh, kind of getting ready to head into the home stretch. Okay. Hey, guys, uh, you know, again, um, I do believe that um, I do believe that this is a very important module. I believe that you will get a lot out of it, both you as a reader and you as a writer. Uh, I hope that you will get some feedback that is actionable and helpful and beneficial, right? Um, I do know that sometimes people think of, oh, you know, I'll just make some comments and we're good, right? I, I, I get that. I know that, you know, how that game is played. But I do want to be very, I, uh, I do want to impress upon you that you're really not doing this for you. Yes, you get something out of it being exposed to how other people do it. You can see things that do and don't work. But it's really about giving that other person something that they can use to help them. Like you're helping that other person. You're giving that hand. You're building in that information for them, right? So it's really important that you take this as seriously as you can. Uh, I have no doubts that you will, but I do like to impress that upon you one more time. Uh, guys, we are doing great work. You are rounding out to the end of the semester. Um, I know that it is hard to keep motivated, but we are almost there. I know you're doing some great work, and I hope that you will continue that. If you have any questions at all, if you need anything, uh, you're stuck, you need advice, direction, whatever, please make sure you're reaching out. Many of you have been doing that, and you, uh, I am, I am uh, always available for you in all the different methods. Email is still the best way to do that, but we can work out whatever method is most effective for you. So again, keep pushing. Keep pushing yourself. I know you're going to do some great work. Don't suffer in silence. If you need something, make sure you're reaching out to, to uh, somebody. And guys, good luck.